feel like we're in the right place. I feel like when we, when we walk away, folks will ask us, well, how'd it go today? We're going to say, well, we had good church today. It's exciting. I can't wait to tell my buddy, we had 23. <laughs> Thank y'all for coming in today. Appreciate good seeing y'all again. <clears throat> Always excited to see you here. If you'd open your Bibles and stay standing, uh, look at John chapter 19, verse 16. Nineteen, sixteen. John chapter nineteen, verse sixteen. The message I wanted to preach before I left for Dallas, but it didn't work out that way. So we improvised, had a fun night of asking questions, and now we're getting to preach this. I'm going to read a couple verses and then skip further down the chapter. So just let you know, be ready to balance. breath, fell on my throat already. Then delivered he him, therefore, to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him on either side, one in Jesus in the midst. Skip down to verse 28. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. My thought this morning is, are we finished? Are we finished? Let's pray. Lord, we, we love you, Jesus. So much, God. You're so, you're so awesome. We know you love us, God, but we want you to know that we love you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this word, Lord. I pray that you bless it, anoint it. Let it be everything that we need to hear, God. Let it be you and not me, God. I rebuke any distractions or hindrances, Lord. Let us receive it, God. In your holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> if I had gotten to preach it when I wanted to, it would have been the Wednesday after Easter. But it was not going to be, and is not now, another Easter message. It's not another message about the cross. <clears throat> This is a message about before the cross and after the cross. There are really too many Christians that are focused only on the cross. You ever wonder why people wear the cross? That's always struck me as odd. What part of the story of the cross makes you think he likes the cross? What part of the cross makes you think he wants to remember the cross? Do you think it was a good experience for him? Do you think he looks back fondly and says, ah, oh, my own cross? Why do people cherish 
such a horrible thing. <coughs> Especially when he's no longer there. It'd be one thing if he was still on it. But he's not. But see, we need to understand that the cross was not the whole story. The cross was this heavy piece of furniture. And one gospel said that he fell under the weight of it. Now this is important because the Bible tells us to take up our own cross and to follow him. The Bible tells us to take up our own heavy piece of furniture. The Bible tells us to take up our own heavy calling, if you will. And that calling does get heavy. And there are times when we've each sat on these pews and maybe even come to an altar and we have fallen under the weight of our calling. We've all wondered if we can move on another inch. We've all fell under the weight of what God has called us to do. Maybe I'm the only one, but I doubt it. I've listened to your stories. But fine, you want to sit there and not aim at me? I say I'm falling under the weight. And I've wondered if I can go any further. This calling is too heavy. I can't carry it no further. This cross is too heavy to bear. But you have to carry that cross. You're called to Calvary. But before you can even get to the crucifixion part of your story, you have to carry that cross. And we want to complain about that cross. We want to feel sorry about it for ourselves about that cross. And I'm not even here to make you feel bad about it. I'm here to, to tell you I can relate. I'm here to tell you I know it's heavy. I know you're hurting. I know you're broken. I know you're wondering if you can go any further. I know you're falling under the weight of your cross. I know you're laying there bleeding. I know you're smashed to the ground under the weight of your cross. I wonder what the real motivation for the guards for giving them help were. One thing I do know, it was not sympathy. They did not care for Jesus. They did not care about his struggle. I believe it was one of two things. He was either walking too slow for them or they were afraid that he was going to die before he got to the top of the hill. Doesn't matter why, but they, but they offered him help. So now he has help carrying the cross. But you know what happens when he got back to the hill? They gave him the cross back. I need you to understand that you just might get a breather from the, from the struggle. You might catch a break, a momentary break, but it's still your cross to bear. It's still your weight, and no one else can go on that cross. No one else could have went on Calvary but Jesus. That was his cross. And now this cross that you're carrying is yours. No one else can go on that cross but you. No one else can finish your calling but you. I can't carry, I can't go on your cross for you. That's your cross. Whatever help we give you, we can only carry it so far. But you have to finish your story. You have to finish your crucifixion story. You cannot escape your cross. You have to finish your purpose. <clears throat> and now that you're on the cross, you have to suffer your cross. You are not too good for your cross. You are not too loved for your cross. You can't sit there and think, oh, doesn't he love me more than this? Doesn't he love me enough to take me off of this? You hang there until it's time to be finished. However long it takes, you are not too precious for the cross. You don't get to determine when you've sat there long enough. 
You hang in there until God says it's finished. And then when the cross is finished, let me ask you, are we finished? And, and, and that's where I feel a lot of us are at the moment. I feel a lot of us are at the point where we feel like we're hung on the cross and we feel dead. We feel like we died and almost a little self-righteous about it, if, we, if you will. We feel like we've done our part. We didn't die to sin. We feel, almost feel like we've martyred ourselves. And we think we're done. Can't go no further. And I'm not mocking you again. I'm just trying to paint a picture of how you might feel. Because I've been there recently. Are we finished? Is this it? Is this all God has? Is this as good as it gets? Is this where we pass the baton to someone else? Is this someone else's turn? Problem is, too many of us quit on the cross. We die, we give up, and we're done. We bore our cross, we've been crucified, and that's where we end our story. Luke 24 talks about two of his disciples after the event I just read to you. They're, they walk away from Jerusalem and they're on their way to Emmaus. That's sad. They were disciples. And they walked away from where they laid their Jesus to rest. They're walking away from where they heard the gospel. They're walking away from where they saw the miracles. Come on now. I'm preaching somebody. I feel it in your heart. You're wondering if I'm talking to you. I am. You are walking away from where you saw your miracle. You are walking away from where you received your Holy Ghost. And you're not doing it because the devil's kicking you. You're doing it in defeat. You're doing it because you feel like you've given up. You're doing it because you feel like you've died out and you're giving up. You feel like you're finished. This is it. It's Calvary. We're dead. We're walking away. That's the end of the story. We're finished. And we're walking away from Jerusalem. The pain of the cross, too much. And they're walking away. I know you feel like it'd be easier to just give up and go back. But let me be honest with you. Let, let, let your pastor give you a hard truth. Even if you were to give up right now, it wouldn't heal your broken heart. If you were to give up right now, it wouldn't heal your broken marriage. It wouldn't fix your difficult job. It wouldn't fix anything. The devil's lying to you. You cannot quit just because you're tired. The solution is not where you came from. The solution is where you're going. Keep going. Keep going. I'm not talking about the disciples walking away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem. I'm talking about the people who are coming to church. Keep going. While these two quitters were leaving, they met a stranger. And he asked them about their countenance. Why are you so sad? And they tell him about their Jesus. And he calls them fools. He said they were foolish to be sad. Let me tell you. You just might be a fool to be sad. I did not put this there for a reason. I want you to listen to me as I read to you Luke 24 and 25. And then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? He said that Jesus had to suffer to finish his purpose. They were sad about things that had to happen. If Jesus couldn't escape the hardship and the pain, why are you praying for an escape? If Jesus couldn't escape it, why do you think you can? 
Don't pray for an escape. Pray for a finish. Surely you know by now that this stranger they were talking to was Jesus. But I need you to remember what day was it that he was talking to them on. They walked away on the third day. They were so consumed with their grief. They were so consumed with their depression that they lost count of what day it was. They forgot what they were taught because he had told them that on the third day he would rise again. Oh, come on now. We get so beat up with our cross. We get so distracted by our pain that we forget what we were taught. Greater is he that he did mean that he is in the world. We are more than conquerors than Christ. We love God. Hallelujah. We are able to overcome. We forget that it's the third day. I know you're hurting. I know you're struggling. But he's still alive. Are we finished? I don't think so. This is Sunday morning. This is a chance to worship. This is a chance to pray. This is a chance to hear his word. On this very day, you should have been excited and overjoyed. And how close were you to quitting? What about tomorrow? Tomorrow's not church day. You know what tomorrow is? Pass it. Good job. <laughs> this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has been. That the Lord. Come on now. Every day is the Lord's day. Every day. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. We're so close to quitting when God is right there. Which leads me to my next point. I told you on Sunday that on Easter, that Easter was only the middle of the story. Easter is pointless without the resurrection. Our death is our repentance and our burial is our baptism, but our resurrection is his Holy Ghost. You're not finished. The cross was just the next step in his plan. Sister Yates. He wasn't finished with Easter. He had to rise again. And then came the day of Pentecost. I know you're hurting. I know you're struggling. We all are. But it's time to resurrect. It's time for Pentecost. And what a place for Pentecost. And the Pentecost was a beat. I listened to a sermon. An older sermon. Oh man, I borrowed bits and pieces. Part of this was on my heart, and I borrowed bits and pieces. But he was telling the story of a woman named Irene. <clears throat> he attended, his, this was back when he was a kid, he attended his daddy's church. Irene was probably the, the, the pillar of all pillars in the church. But her husband was not in church. And she taught Sunday school and he did everything he could to live for the world. And they had two teenage girls and just as hard as she tried to get them girls in church, he tried just as hard to literally keep them in the world. Every Sunday she'd ask him to come to the church, he'd ask him to go to the, to the rodeo or to the ball game or whatever. He, he wanted them every bit. And, and what do you think the, the teenagers did? You know, they, 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 they weren't committed to the church, they were committed to the world and one night she came to the to the man's house and again he was a, a young boy he answered the door and she goes I need to talk to your daddy he led her to the living room set her down and went and got the parents and they came and he went around and was eavesdropping on, the, on this other wall and she turned in her Sunday school book and says I can't do this no more I quit I'm tired of fighting my husband every week every day I quit. And she made it known. She goes, no, I want you to know I love you. I mean, pastor's wife, I love you. I was, and I love God and I love the church. I just can't fight this fight no more. And, and it was a much longer, bigger ado about it than just that short. So we want to summarize him. And the boy said his dad thought about it a second. And said, I'm asking you one favor. If you love me as much as you say you do, 
And if you love God and continue to go ask me one request, and then I'll let you quit. She goes, why? He gave me the book back because I want you to teach one more lesson. Just next week. Just teach one more lesson. That's it. She goes, well, that violates what I came here to do. But I do love you. I mean, everything I said. So I'll do it. I'll teach you one more Sunday school lesson. And then I'm done. He said, that's a deal. The boy forgot about it. He said, that was a Tuesday. Didn't even think about it. The rest of the story goes, the woman was testifying later, that come Sunday morning, she was getting dressed for church. And her husband came in and said, where's my suit? to quit six days before he made up his mind that he was also tired of fighting that fight. She goes, what do you mean where's your suit? He goes, I'm tired of fighting you. I'm going to church with you. Now the girls are going to church. What hope is there in quitting? What victory is there in quitting? You think you'll find relief in quitting? The only thing you'll find in quitting is guilt and regret. Finish the race. Fight the good fight. And believe in God. Let's stand and bow our heads. Are we finished? Well, that's up to you. But I'm not. Not until God says I'm finished. The Holy Ghost is here, and ye shall receive power after you receive the Holy Ghost. Maybe you need the Holy Ghost. It's, it's here. Oh, it's available for you. It's available for everyone. These altars are open for somebody ready for a renewal or a new beginning. Let's pray. Bye.